Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. So the AI race is on. Everyone is racing to get to ADI first and build bigger and bigger data centers that are sucking up huge amount of energy that equals whole cities. Like we have seen with Tesla and XAI's huge GPU clusters Cortex and Colossal. So that is no doubt the dark side of the AI race. But are we doomed and will AI destroy our grid? and skyrocket energy costs because of all the huge demand this will all create. Well, we have to look at some of the breakthrough technologies we are seeing right now to try to understand what the future might look like. And there might be some very bright light at the end of the tunnel. But if we try to look out in the future with today's technology, you might end up missing the numbers by 40,000 X. So, let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So Elon Musk AI company has built the world's largest AI cluster with 200,000 GPUs. This operation involves significant energy infrastructure, including purchasing a factory, upgrading a substation, tapping into the natural gas line and planning to build a natural gas plant next door. They will also deploy Tesla's mega packs for stable power and using industrious chillers for cooling, indicating a comprehensive approach to the energy management. So AI training centers are no joke. We are seeing Meta, Amazon, Google, Microsoft are all doing the same thing. As the race for AI is on and nobody wants to be left behind as the value creation is going to be off the chart. But so is the energy demand. So what about the energy consumption? Will it destroy our grid? Well, it could be devastating if we didn't approve it at all and just kept building out these huge energy sucking data centers that is consuming more energy than entire cities. And that is also why we have people and companies finding it unfair that someone like Ford and other OEMs are forced to pay Tesla EV credits because they are not building enough E0 emission vehicles. And then Tesla is just using these billions of dollars to build these supercomputer cluster that are sucking up huge amount of energy energy with no consequence. But firstly, all of these data centers are of course not running around inside our cities polluting the air we breathe, giving us cancer. But that said, of course something has to be done with these huge energy demand of these data centers that everyone is raising to build bigger and bigger and bigger. But once again, as I've talked about many times before, when we're looking into the future, but using today's technology, we will be wrong, very, very wrong. We have to try to imagine what tech will become available to try to predict how all of this will play out. So seeing people saying GPUs use this much energy, so when they build out in 10 years time, they will use this and this much energy. Well, yes, if everything doesn't change at all over the next 10 years, but it has already changed significantly over the last 10 years. So that kind of thinking will be off by hundreds of orders of magnitude. Also because it's not just the AI industry that is changing and being disrupted, so are the energy generation and distribution and so much more. So let's try to look at some of the potential technologies that will help with all of this in the future and why we might not have to worry too much, but we definitely have to make this change happen for this not to end badly. So let's start with the technology behind the large language models that are already showing new technology breakthrough in energy efficiency that might come down the road. Ars Technica published an article titled Researchers Upend AI Status Quo by Eliminating Matrix Multiplication in Large Language Models. The article discussed how researchers have developed a method to run AI language models more effectively by eliminating matrix multiplication, potentially reducing power consumption significantly. This research paper from UC Santa Cruz shows how AI researchers found a way to run modern 
billion parameter scale large language model on just 13 watts of power. For context, that's about the same as a 100 volt equivalent LED bolt. But more importantly, it's about 50 times more efficient than the 700 watt of power that's needed by data centers GPUs like the NVIDIA H100 and H200. Tom's hardware noted the efficiency gains, suggesting that this approach could make large language models more practical for use in devices with limited power sources like smartphones with this significant improvement in power per watt. But more importantly, this will improve how much power is needed in general to run these huge AI data centers. And this is just one technology breakthrough that might lower the energy consumption substantially in the future when looking out in the future with some of the future technology coming. But also the efficiency of the GPUs themselves, like NVIDIA's AI chip, has already improved significantly over the last decade, but that will also continue going forward. Jensen has said that the training ultra-large AI models with 2000 Blackwell GPUs would consume 4 megawatt of power over 90 days, whereas using 8000 older GPUs for the same task would consume 15 megawatts. So that is reducing the energy consumption almost fourfold on that single change. And if we zoom out a bit to get a better understanding of how things are progressing, we can see NVIDIA's efficiency over the last decade. Well, the energy required for tokens has dropped 45,000x in eight years. Let me say that one more time, 45,000 times in eight years years. So just try to imagine the people that eight years ago said that AI would consume this amount of energy in 2024 and then be 45 times off the mark. This really illustrates my point about looking into the future with today's technology. The guys in the past would have been off by 45,000 fold. So this will of course continue. So if we use old data points to try to predict the future of energy consumption for AI inference, you can easily be off by hundreds of orders of magnitudes. Because just using data points from two years ago, from 2022, you will basically be off by an order of magnitude compared to what we have today. So using the data point of today will probably also be off by an order of magnitude when we look another five years out in the future, especially in the world of AI that is evolving so fast. So no matter what, we will be wrong in our predictions. But if we should try to guess what the future holds, we have to look out in the future with the potential future technologies that will probably prove to be the most accurate. So all of this collectively highlights the significant shift in AI modeling architecture, focusing on efficiency and sustainability by removing one of the most computational intensive operations in current models and improving the efficiency of the GPUs running the models. However, they also noted in the research paper, it is still a preprint stage and has yet to be peer reviewed indicating the preliminary nature of these findings. But we have to look at things that might come in the future and not look at today's technology to have a chance to just be somewhat accurate. But there is another thing about this AI race that we also have to consider. Because AI is not just another consumer product. We are creating intelligence. So when we have super intelligence, there is no saying what we will be able to come up with. Probably new ways of making energy or training AI systems, who knows? So maybe this investment in AI will pay off in the long term. We just don't know what it will bring to the world just yet. Because there is still so much we dumb humans still don't understand. Just to give you a little idea of what kind of technology that could be coming that is currently beyond our wildest imagination. Researchers have just achieved something outstanding in the realm of quantum physics. They've created photons that exist in 37 dimensions at once. Yeah, 
Don't ask me how this works, but this is just to show us there is so much we don't understand and AI could potentially help us unlock science and technologies that is currently beyond our understanding. So that is, of course, also something to keep in mind when we are talking about AI and the future and energy consumption. We are not just producing yet another consumer product. With all this energy, we could be unlocking an intelligence that will make it the last thing we humans have to invent, as AI could do the rest for us, and maybe unlock the next generation of energy, whatever that might be, fusion reaction, or something we haven't even thought about yet, maybe sucking energy out of 37 dimensions, <laughs> who knows? But adding humanoid robots to the mix, and we also have an unlimited labor force to make everything we and the AI can dream up happen. It will not be because of shortages in labor anyway. But there is one last thing that we have to talk about when looking into the future with AI and energy consumption, and that is energy generation and distribution that is also being disrupted. We cannot look at how it works today. We know that solar has already become the cheapest form of energy generation, but that will only continue. So over the next 10 years, it is expected that the cheapest form of energy will become 70% cheaper once again. But it is the combination of solar, wind and battery storage, SWB systems, that will not just create a much cheaper form of energy, but because a system like this has to be built out to support the coldest and darkest days of the year, the rest of the year, over 360 days, you will be generating energy in abundance. So the example Tony Saber uses in his presentation is New England. The first key finding that is non-intuitive is this. There is a non-linear relationship between generation and storage. So there are thousands of possible energy systems that are along that SIU curve um, that are 100% SWB, thousands. So it is possible. Um, and there is a non-linear trade-off between generation and storage. So that's another key feature of disruption. This is not a one-to-one -one substitution where you take one coal mine, one coal power plant or uh, nuke or whatever, and you substitute that one with solar plus storage. Um, this is a completely new system, completely different system. Um, so there's a non-linear trade-off. How do you choose for the least cost system? So we did that calculation uh, and this red line shows what the least cost system is um, for several regions. And what we found was because of that non-linear trade-off is that to have 100% SWB, you can do that with anywhere from one day to four days of storage. That's it. So the idea of seasonal storage, where you need weeks or maybe months of storage, is not quite right because this is not a one-to-one -one substitution. Um, so only one to four days of storage are needed, depending on the region. Um, but to do that, you need to build capacity for solar and wind that uh, essentially is three to five times what the demand is today. Um, so because solar is getting to be so cheap, um, you can essentially build a lot more capacity in order to have less battery storage. Another uh, key finding is that this system, because it's designed for the lowest possible combination of wind and solar resources, um, essentially will create super abundant, near zero marginal cost energy the rest of the year. Zero cost clean energy, super abundant the rest of the year. We call that superpower. Now, what does that mean? So for these regions, California, Texas, um, New England, for instance, New England has the poorest solar or wind resources in the nation. And yet, um, when you build a 100% SWB system, there are 63% of days when you will get more than twice the generation that you get today for free. This is extra power for free, super abundant, clean, uh, that's super power. In um, California and Texas, you get free super abundant power 93% of days. Another key finding um, is this, there are disproportionate returns to incremental investments in this infrastructure. So what does that mean? It means that once you have this 100% SWB system, if you invest, for instance, 20% more, um, you may get up to 300% more energy 
more superpower. We have never seen, repeat, an extra 20% investment may get you 200, 300% more superpower. We have never seen this in resource-based energy. And that's why it's so disruptive, which is another key finding. Superpower is, is disruptive, not just to electric power. It's disruptive to all forms of energy. So in California, for instance, when you invest in the basic 100% SWB, you get all of this additional superpower that can essentially power every single mile of transportation if every car a vehicle in California were electric for free. Did I say free? So because of this, we will end up having an abundance of energy basically for free. If you want to take a deeper dive, I can highly recommend Rethink's full presentation. But remember, households are also becoming their own little power plant, generating energy from solar on the roof and storing it in batteries, basically taking that house and the electric car off the grid and can even be part of a virtual power plant and help out the grid. So the fact that we have so many small microgrid emerging and decentralizing power generation will also help about the grid and these huge AI data centers could potentially have their own power plant supporting the data center and not relying on sucking energy from the grid itself. As we have already seen them talk about today, XAI want to create their own gas power plant next door to run the whole data center. So again, looking into the future with today's grid, energy generation and distribution will end up being very wrong because someone like Rethink and Tony Saber is not looking out in the future with today's tech. They're trying to look out in the future and see what kind of system we might have in the future. So if Tony Saber is going to be right again, we might not have a huge energy problem in five to 10 years from now, as we will have energy generation systems that will make energy in abundance. So the opposite could end up being true, that we will have AI data centers running on cheap energy generated on the SWB systems, or maybe everything else will be running on that. And only the AI data centers will be running on the old system. Who knows how all of this will play out. But looking at the new technologies emerging both in large language models, inference efficiency, GPUs efficiency, and the possibility of energy generation superpower making energy abundant, I think the future could actually look very bright and not as dark as some people would like it to look like. I personally think we have a very exciting future to look forward to with all the things that are happening over the next five to 10 years with AI, robots, energy and autonomy. We still have a lot of work ahead of us before we can get to that future with abundance in energy and labor. But what a future it could become. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.